Blue velvet. <laughs> In this video, we are going to be making the mini Stay Puffed Marshmallow Men from Ghostbusters Afterlife. To get started, I'm going to be sculpting my own Stay Puffed figure using polymer clay and some sculpting tools including wire and foil. Uh, you may already have a Stay Puffed figure, something similar to this little adipose that I made the last time I made custom marshmallows, but as of the making of this video, there were no mini Stay Puffed men available for purchase, so I had to make my own. And you can see that I'm making a little ball of foil, that's just so that I could make his little round belly without using up all of my clay. If you want something that you're gonna keep afterwards, maybe, you know, it just has a little figure on your desk, then I'd recommend making a full wire armature with a, you know, head and arms and legs that you can build up on, but I was just wanting something that would stay together long enough for me to make a candy mold out of it, so I cheated a bit. Um, and you can see I'm making the head now. Uh, one more piece of advice before you get started on something like this. Make sure your cat is not on the desk and won't interrupt you when you're in the middle of sculpting. And as you watch me struggle to sculpt the face on this little marshmallow man because I don't have a whole lot of experience sculpting, I would like to point out that if you're looking for a much easier Stay Puffed Marshmallow recipe, I do have one available on my blog uh, for Stay Puffed Marshmallow Pops. And that one was actually shared by the uh, official Ghostbusters social media team last year. They actually contacted me and asked if they could share the recipe and, uh, you know, tag me uh, on their posts about it, which was very nice of them. So I will include a link to that in the description box below. The benefit to the process that I'm showing you here, though, is that you can use it to make not just custom marshmallows, but really any sort of custom candy. So you can use it for gummy candies. Uh, I use the same basic process to make my melting chocolate Death Star, which I'll link up here. And uh, hard candies, um, ice. I don't know why I ended on ice, like that's the exciting thing to make with it, but you know, you get the idea. Basically anything that you can uh, pour in and then let set, you can use with these molds. Um, so I think we sort of get the idea with how to sculpt this little guy, so I'm going to sort of fast forward through the rest of it. And there he is! So now I just have to bake him off because he's made of polymer clay. Mmm, fresh baked clay. Now it's time to make our candy mold, so just kick your cat out of the seat that he stole from you. Come on, man. And we are once again going to be using the Easy Mold Cast and Craft silicone putty. Uh, this is one of my favorite supplies for just custom kitchen crafts. Uh, it's really easy to use. You just get an equal amount of purple and white putty. Uh, it doesn't have to be exact. You can just eyeball it. Mix them together until there is no more streaks left. And then you've got just a couple minutes to make a mold out of anything you choose. And while we wait for that to cure, you may be looking around your room thinking, what else can I make a mold out of? Well, here are some things you may want to avoid. First of all, any pieces that are long and narrow would not make a good candy mold. So, for example, the Enterprise 
not the best ship to make a candy mold out of. There are just too many pieces that are really thin and will probably snap before you can get a piece of chocolate, say, uh, out of your mold. Now you may be looking at the Rocinante and thinking, hey, this one seems pretty good. I mean, you might lose those guns at the tip, but uh, other than that, it's pretty sturdy. The problem with the Rossi is that it's too textured. Uh, and a little texture is fine, but that much you're going to get a bunch of air bubbles. There are ways to get around this with a liquid silicone, but we're just dealing with the putty right now. So the Rossi's a no, but one ship that would make a good candy mold is the Millennium Falcon. It's a... Uh, one big flat piece. It's got some nice texture, but not too much, especially if we just got rid of this little piece. There we go. And it's especially nice because it's such a recognizable shape. Even if you were to make it in chocolate, people would probably still know what it was. Do you have a ship that you'd like to make a candy mold out of? Let me know in the comments below. Now our silicone is set, so it's time to remove our figure and check out what we got. And you may be able to see some little air bubbles in there, especially in the belly area, but that's one of the reasons I really like this material. It will stick to itself even after it's cured, so you can just make up a little batch uh, and use that to fill in any air bubbles. You can also use this if you ever tear the mold while you're using it. Uh, just use a little more silicone to patch it up. And we're done! Now let's just make a few more and we're ready to make marshmallows. For this recipe, you're going to need one cup of sugar, a quarter cup of water, a pinch of salt, half teaspoon of vanilla, one packet of plain gelatin, a third of a cup of water, two tablespoons cornstarch, and two tablespoons powdered sugar. Hot tip, if you ever need to spray something with non-stick spray, especially something small, use the inside door of your dishwasher, assuming you have one, uh, so that you won't get oil all over your countertop. Now here I'm just dabbing up any excess oil in the mold. Unfortunately, I've also skipped a very important step, which will cause a problem for me later on. And I'm also prepping a piping bag so that I don't have to worry about it later once the marshmallow has been made. To the bowl of a stand mixer, we are adding the 1 quarter cup water and the packet of gelatin. And to the saucepan, the sugar, salt, and one third cup of water. Eat the sugar mixture to 235 to 240 degrees Fahrenheit. And I also made a little mistake here. I put this mixture in too large of a saucepan so the liquid couldn't quite reach my candy thermometer. So I got out a second one just to be sure of the temperature. Now with your stand mixer on low speed, very carefully pour your very hot sugar syrup mixture down the side of the bowl. And you can use a hand mixer for this, but just be prepared for a very intense arm workout because this is going to take a lot of mixing. As you can see, after you've got it incorporated, you can increase the speed and mix until it starts to resemble marshmallow. And around this time you should add your vanilla extract. And it'll be done when it's fairly thick and it leaves a trail, but the trail will disappear into the marshmallow after a few seconds, just like this. I like to use a piping bag just because it's neater and it also allows me to get into all the little corners of the mold as I'm filling it. So once you've got the mold completely filled up, just tap it a few times to try to get rid of any air bubbles that may be on the surface and move on. And you'll probably have a little bit of marshmallow left over unless you've made enough molds for it. So I keep a pan set aside just for that extra marshmallow. After one to two hours, your marshmallow should be set and ready to unmold. So you can see, I start by pulling away from the edges and then getting the little guy out of there. And the first one came out pretty, pretty well. I was very happy with it. And he just needed to be tossed in the sugar cornstarch mixture. Unfortunately, 
My next two did not go so well. This guy lost most of his hat, and this one, he lost a hand. So I realized what I had forgotten to do was brush all of the little corners of the mold after I had sprayed it with the nonstick spray to make sure that it was nonstick everywhere. And lo and behold, once I did that and remade my marshmallows, I got three wonderful little Stay Puft Marshmallow Men. I apologize, I poke their bellies a lot in this video. It's very difficult not to do that when they're right in front of you. So for their eyes, I'm using these little white round sprinkles, which just happen to be the perfect size. And I stuck those in with a little bit of melted white chocolate just to make sure they stayed in there. And for all the other details, I'm just using these little Food Rider edible color markers. I use the black for the pupils. as well as the red and blue for the details on the hat. Now you can use um, a little pull and peel Twizzler for the ribbon on the hat if you want something a little more three-dimensional, um, but I didn't have any available to me while I was making these, so I just drew it on. And here is the final product. I really hope that other people are as tickled by these as I am. I just felt like they were so cute and adorable and I had a lot of fun making them. Of course, we all know that the true test of a marshmallow is whether or not it makes a good s'more. So please avert your eyes if marshmallow violence upsets you because I am going to set this guy on fire. Many thanks to my friend Casey for letting me borrow her creme brulee torch. Kids, please don't do this at home without adult supervision. <laughs> ah, I'm sorry, is that not just the saddest thing you've ever seen? And moment of truth. I apologize for being out of focus and not used to filming myself. And 10 out of 10 marshmallow. It's soft, fluffy, sweet. Only negative is that it makes a pretty messy s'more. And that's it. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I will make more ridiculous things for you. And until next time, remember if someone asks if you are a god, you say yes.